Hi students, we're going to cover 6.2 on angle bisectors in this video. Um, okay, so you may recall that an angle bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles. So again, we had the angle drawn, whatever that angle was, and then we bisected that angle by splitting right down the middle and making these two uh, <coughs> congruent angles. So that's what an angle bisector is. An angle bisector can be a line, a segment, or a ray. So you've got the ray, you can continue it as a line, and you can stop it as a segment. So any of those are fine. So the angle bisector theorem, again, we're going to use these to solve problems, not to do proofs. It says if a point is on the bisector of an angle, then it is equidistant from the sides of the angle. So essentially it means that if I take any point on that angle bisector right here, that it's equal distance to the sides. Now, if you remember, we've talked about the distance from a point to a line, or a segment in this case, which the side of the angle is a segment, and that has to be perpendicular. So I'd have to go perpendicular to the side over here and then perpendicular to the side over here. And in order to do that, then I know that those are congruent to each other. So what you're going to see in the diagrams with this is just that, is that you can see those perpendicular pieces that are drawn in there. Because in order to talk about the um, sides, the distance of to the sides, it has to be perpendicular. Okay. And so what we know here is that if BF is an angle bisector, which you can see by those two markings down there, then the distance to the sides are congruent to each other. So those would be equal to each other or equal measures there. The converse of that says that if you know, so if you have an angle and you know if a point is in the interior of the angle and it's equidistant from the sides of the angle. So if I know that this point and the distance to there and the distance to there are the same, Okay, so if I know that, then I know it's on the angle bisector. So I know that if I were to draw this figure in, then those two are congruent to each other. So the if is what's drawn here, the then would be knowing that that is true. Okay, so that's your um, converse of that one. <clears throat> Okay, so in the figure below, there is not enough information to conclude that BD bisects angle ABC. So here we just have that this segment here and this segment here are congruent to each other. And you don't know that they are um, actually bisected. The idea of this is that if I draw one that's clearly not, I can draw a distance from here to the side, okay, and we can look at approximately that distance, and I could draw a segment over here that's that same distance, Okay, and so then that point is the same distance from both sides, quote unquote, or whatever. So we have kind of this picture because there's no right angle marking over here. It could be a picture like this, and then it doesn't um, guarantee that those two angles are actually congruent to each other. Okay, so there's not enough information in that um, picture right there. Okay, so find SP. So usually these are pretty straightforward, just kind of looking to make sure that you have the information. So we have an angle bisector right here. That means that I know that the distances, we do have those right angles to the sides are equal. So you just set 3x plus 5 equal to 6x minus, one, minus 7, sorry. Subtract the 3x, you'd get 3x. Add the 7 to the other side, you'd get 12. Divide by 3, you get x equal to 4. <clears throat> and it asks how long SP is. So we do 6 times 4 minus 7 and 24 minus 7 is going to give us 17. So SP is equal to um, 17 in this example here. <clears throat> okay, um, the next check, find the measure of angle JKL. So if we look at this, in this problem, I have a point that is shown equidistant to two rays that are over here. So we do have that equal distance, and we have that right angle that's there. So since those are equal distances, then this is an angle bisector. So this angle and this angle are equal. It asks for angle JKL, which is this angle over here. So my answer is 37 degrees. Be careful on these because it could ask, for instance, for the measure of angle JKM um, in this one, and you'd have to solve for that. So just make sure you pay attention to what the angle is that it's um, asking for. Okay, so then the angle bisectors of a triangle um, go to the point of concurrency here. So we have that point of concurrency, and it is called the in-center. So we've talked about that idea. We brought that up. But if you have the three angle bisectors, so you can see those in orange here, intersect at the point of concurrency. P right there is the in-center. What we know about the in-center is that it's equidistant from the sides. So what else you see drawn in here is the extra, and that is that if you draw the distance to the side and the distance to a side and distance to a side, all of those are equal to each other. Okay, so that's what we know um, about our in-center there. 
So find the measures of J if J is the in center. So when you see J is the in center, you want to think a few things. One, you want to think that's angle bisectors. So J connected back to the angle means that these two are congruent to each other. So if that was 33.9, this one was 33.9. Okay, J connected back to an angle is going to bisect that angle. So this one's going to be 28.5. And then the same thing on this end connected back to the angle. Those angles are going to be equal to each other. Don't have a measure, so I'm going to leave them alone for right now. Okay, so we know those are angle bisectors, but we also know that the in center is the same distance to all the sides. So I know that these distances are all congruent with each other. Okay, so the first thing it wants us to know is JF is equal to um, what? And what we do not know, be careful about this, is that AF is equal to FC. That is not guaranteed to be a midpoint of that side there. So JF is what they're asking us for. So that would be this here. I'm going to put that in as X. I've got a 9.4 over here and a 10.6. So since this is X, this is also X, and it's this triangle right here, this right triangle that I'm going to solve. So I'm gonna solve X squared plus 9.4 squared equal to 10.6 squared. Make sure your hypotenuse of your triangle, the one across from your 90 is always your long side. So that's what's right here. Um, and if we solve through this one, I guess I could just give you guys the answer to it. But if we solve through this one, we would do 9.4 squared which would give us 88.36, 10.6 squared, which would give us 112.36. If we subtract those from each other, um, we're going to get 24. So we're going to get x squared is equal to 24 and take a square root. Um, and it just tells us to find the measure. Just want to make sure I'm not missing anything there. Um, and it doesn't say what to round it to, so you can choose your rounding. But we're going to do the square root of 24, and that's going to give us about 4.9. So there's my approximate answer there. I'm just going to go to one decimal. So that's what my measure of JF is. Measure of angle JAC. So I'm going to find JAC. So it's this angle right here, so I'm going to throw a Y in there. And if we want to find that angle, now we don't know the other one that's Y also over here. But what we do know is that if you follow the large triangle here. Remember, the angles of a triangle add up to 180. So angle B over here, the large angle B over here is 33.9 times 2, which is 67.8. The large angle C over here is double the 28.5, which is 57. And then that's going to leave angle A with a certain amount. So I'm going to do 180 minus that 67.8 minus that 57 to figure out what my large angle A over here is. Let me do that real quick. That's 55.2. So that tells me what angle EAF is. And since both of these are congruent, I'm going to then divide that by 2 and get 27.6. So my angle JAC, which is just one of these guys here, is 27.6 um, degrees. Sometimes you're going to use the um, smaller triangles. Sometimes you're going to use the bigger triangles. So you just kind of have to look around to see what you know. <clears throat> okay, for those of you that... Um, for these type of problems, you actually have to use a compass and straight edge, which we're going to get into after um, the break. But for me, I just want you to be able to approximate the value by sketching the lines for this one. So if we look at this problem, it says, Tyrese's parents want to install a hot tub on the back deck of their house. The vertices of the deck are located at the points X, Y, and Z. Find the location of the center of the hot tub so it is equidistant from the edges of the deck. If necessary, round your answer to the nearest whole number. So we want to go equidistant from the edges of the deck. And what we know about that is... Um, that the, um, sorry, equidistant from the edges or from the sides of the deck is going to be the in center. So we want to find the in center, which is made up of the angle bisectors. So if I bisect this angle here, now I actually should be able to do this one pretty accurately, um, although there's lots of lines in here, and for some reason they're all a little crooked, but you have that um, angle bisector, then you would be able to do kind of split this angle the best that you can in half there, so you would have something like this, and then you would have your third one that would split in half um, and go through there and being able to do this. Again, what I want you to be able to do is just to approximate it based on this, um, on the coordinate grid um, for right now, but we have that point um, that comes through here, and this point right here is then at approximately um, 8.3, I think, is it by ones? It's by ones, I'm not at the right point there, hold on. 
it's approximately at four. I think I see that there is at four and we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I think it's at about four, seven um, is where we're at for that one. So again, we're just approximating this. This is not a, a perfect measure of it. I'm just kind of sketching in those angle bisectors um, for that one. Okay, that is it for today.